Well, guess what, folks? It is the last day of the month of January. Yes, we made it through the end of January. Woo! Good morning. It is THG News today with Mervyn Hanley. It's a pleasure to have you here so that you can hear what's going on around the region. Each morning, we come here to, to bring to you news from various islands. And so thank you for your support thus far in listening to, in sharing, and of course, subscribing to our network, THG Network, THG News Today. Let us hear from our sponsor, uh, that's Carl and Sons on St. Martin. And we'll be right back with Wednesday Morning's News right here on THG. Carl and Sons have been serving the people of St. Martin for over 40 years. And the food and service get better and better. From early morning, customers flock to the bakery for their favorite sandwiches, cakes, pastries, you name it. First thing at mornings and last thing at afternoons, folks rush to Carl and Sons for simply the best. There are two locations, Cold Bay and on the Pondville. In Cold Bay, the opening hours are Monday to Friday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. On Saturdays, 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. And on Sundays, 6.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. and 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Opening hours on the Pondville, Monday to Friday, 6.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday and Sunday, 6.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. We also cater for weddings, parties, special events, whatever the occasion. It's Carl and Sons. Our staff, we are always happy to serve you. Call us today, the Colby location, 721 544-2462 That's 721-544-2462 Or in Phillipsburg 721-543-1059 That's 721-543-1059 It's Carl and Sons Bakery We are here to serve you Now we begin with news out of Miami, and this is from actually concerning the BVI. Of course, we are following the trial. Finally, it has started. The trial against uh, Andrew A. Foy, the former premier of the British Virgin Islands. So after two years, the trial of former premier Andrew A. Foy has finally commenced. And the United States prosecutors are characterizing the legal matter as an open and shut case to the jurors. Prosecutors presented their case on Monday, January 29th, in a Miami federal court against Foy, alleging that he conspired to traffic cocaine from South America to the United States through the BVI. According to local media in Miami, and also according to 284 News on the BVI, the opening statements of the trial shed light on accusations of Foy's involvement in facilitating the undetected transport of large quantities of cocaine through the U.S. ports. Prosecutor Sean McLaughlin characterized the case as simple and straightforward as it gets, contending that Foy knowingly played a pivotal role in moving thousands of kilograms of cocaine, receiving a 12% cut of all sales. The prosecutor asserted that Foy used a portion of the illicit proceeds to pay bribes to other BVI officials, while the majority funded the construction of a new house in the British Virgin Islands. In Foy's defense, his attorney, Joyce Delgado, acknowledged the recorded conversations presented by the prosecution, but argued that jurors must consider Foy's intent. She said Foy was of the firm belief that the United Kingdom government was conspiring to frame him and remove him as Premier of the Virgin Islands. Delgado emphasized that after the jurors hear all the evidence, they will be left with enough reasonable doubt to return a not guilty verdict. Foy faces charges of cocaine trafficking and money laundering conspiracies. The indictment alleges that Foy and the former managing director of the BVI Ports Authority, Olivine Maynard, would obtain licenses, protect boats while docked in the BVI, and pay off government officials to facilitate the movement of Colombian cocaine through BVI ports to Miami. The arrest of Foy and Olivine Maynard took place on April 2022 after a meeting in Miami with a government confidential source believed to be a member of the Mexican cartel and an undercover officer. 
Kadi Maynard was also arrested simultaneously in St. Thomas, the U.S. Virgin Islands. While the Maynards pled guilty in May 2023 with Olivine Maynard agreeing to testify at the trial, Foy, who served as BVI's premier from February 2019, faces the legal challenge to prove his innocence. Kadim is presently serving a 57-month prison sentence as part of his plea deal agreement to assist authorities in further investigations relating to the case. Olivine, who is listed as a key witness in Foy's case, is yet to be sentenced after pleading guilty and taking a plea deal agreement to assist in the ongoing case. Her sentencing has been delayed until February 22nd. Andrew A. Foy is represented by attorneys Theresa Van Vliet and Joyce Delgado a Venable LLP. So there you had it in a nutshell, the opening arguments. The case has started, the trial of Premier Andrew A. Foy. And wow, this is some, some information here on both sides. And uh, we will see what happens. We will see, but remember, Foy is innocent until proven guilty by a jury of his peers. Yeah, so we shall see how that goes in a couple of weeks. Now, something good definitely took place on St. Kitts yesterday. And in an exceptional milestone for its cruise tourism sector, the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis became the prestigious first stop for the world's largest cruise ship, Icon of the Seas, on Tuesday, January 30th, part of the esteemed Royal Caribbean Fleet, the Icon of the Seas chose St. Kitts and Nevis as its initial destination after setting sail on its maiden voyage from Miami on January 27th. So St. Kitts and Nevis, that is something great. Chosen as the first stop. Yeah? The arrival of Icon of the Seas at Port Zante in Bastia signifies not only a new chapter in the nation's thriving tourism industry, but also underscores the global recognition and appeal of St. Kitts and Nevis as a premier cruise destination. This momentous occasion is a testament to the government's commitment in partnership with stakeholders to enhancing the tourism infrastructure and the services, ensuring a warm and memorable experience for all visitors. In response to the significant event, Ellison Tommy Thompson, CEO of St. Kitts Tourism Authority, expressed his enthusiasm and optimism about the significant milestone. We're just really pleased that St. Kitts and Nevis is the first port of call on its inaugural revenue sailing, and we really value our relationship with Royal Caribbean, and we will just grow from strength to strength. Now imagine that. Imagine that for a second. The largest cruise ship in the world. Let me say that again. The largest cruise ship in the world. Royal Caribbean Cruise made a decision to make St. Kitts or to have St. Kitts and Nevis as the first port of call. They could have gone anywhere. St. Martin, Bahamas, Jamaica, St. Lucia, the Caymans, Mexico, anywhere. But they chose Sink it as the first call. That says a lot. That says a lot about the confidence and how pleased they are with the working relationship, the working partnership with the tourism minister of Sink it, Minister Henderson, and her team. And yes, confidence, at least in the government of Sink it and Nevis, the federal government, that is. Got to make sure that I make sure that federal. So this is an amazing feat. And I want to say to the, whatever you're doing, to Minister Henderson and the team at Tourism, whatever you guys are doing, it's working. It is working and continue the great job. I continue to applaud the work in Tourism by this minister and her team. You got to give them credit. We call them out when they're doing nonsense, but we got to give them credit. We got to give Sinkits credit. They understand. They get it. Oh, yes. Okay, and this boat, the Icon of the Seas, spanning an impressive 1,197 feet in length, boasts of 20 decks and has the capacity to accommodate up to 7,600 passengers and 2,350 crew members. Look at that. What a beauty. Look at that. What a beauty. We're back in Tortola with some news this morning. And, of course, drafting of the immigration policy proposes 10 years for residency. And hear this, 20 years for belongership eligibility. 20 years. 
So the draft immigration policy is proposing the length of uh, time a person must be residing in, to, in the territory to become eligible for residency and belongership status. The draft belonger status and the permanent residency policy for the Virgin Islands was published on January 29th, and the government of the Virgin Islands is inviting feedback from the public. According to the draft policy, applicants must be ordinarily resident in the territory for at least 10 years before becoming eligible to apply for permanent residence. To become eligible to apply for belonger status, an applicant must be ordinarily a resident in the territory for at least 20 years. This is what they're proposing or before they actually own you or kind of, you know, like say, okay, you're one of us. 20 years, you have to be living there. We have some countries, you go there, some islands, especially those coming in from, and this is no, what, what I'm about to say is no disrespect to the the, the, the nationality or the, the country. But for example, I'm going to give one example. You have those from the Dominican Republic. They can go to one of these countries, islands, and in no time, they become a citizen. They get a work permit within a, a month. And by the by the time you blink, they're at the polls. They can vote. They have a passport in no time. But in Tortola, they'll make you work and earn it because they understand that people sweat blood and tears for their country. They fought for their country. And so they're saying, no, you're not going to just come in here and get a, a belonger status just like that or even vote. You're going to wait. You're going to earn this and you have to prove yourself. So 20 years before you get belonger status in the, in the Virgin Islands. And according to Premier and Minister of Finance, Dr. the Honorable Natalia Wheatley, he said the policy's foundation is built on balance, balancing economic growth with cultural integration and social stability. It recognizes the invaluable contributions of immigrants to our community, while also safeguarding the interests and heritage of Virgin Islanders, the Premier stated the policy is now accessible on the government's website and persons are encouraged to submit feedback to mtcsd, that's mtcsd at gov.vg by Friday. That's mtcsd at gov.vg by Friday, February the 2nd. One thing with government agencies, boy, they have these emails. They can just make it, you can just, you guys can just make these things so simple. What about Belonger status at gov.vg. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, folks, that's our news for this morning. It's always a pleasure to be here with you. Wake up early in the morning to present to you the news for today or each day, Monday to Friday. I'll be back with you, God spare, tomorrow morning at six o'clock for a similar presentation. I am Mervyn Henley, and I'm wishing every one of you a great and blessed day.